Hey everyone, this is Lomi, and well over a year ago, I got a doll head from a friend that was missing a head cap. I sort of dreaded trying to sculpt one, so I thought, why not see if I could make it using an easy tool? I fired up Tinkercad in my browser and used measurements to draft a rough head cap shape. It didn't take too long, but I knew I'd probably have to make a few revisions. Tinkercad is awesome if you don't have a lot of sculpting skill because with it, you build things using primitive shapes. They're a lower resolution than what I'd probably sculpt on my own, but it would go together a lot faster. And I don't need anything to be perfectly smooth since this will be hidden under the doll's wig all the time anyway. My first test print showed the overall size was just about perfect, but my math for placement of the indentation was way off. So I went back into Tinkercad and ungrouped my design so I could move the primitives and make some adjustments. That's one of the nice things about using this to build basic things. It's easy to go back and change it at any time, and I can export a print-ready file with a click of a button. Even though I have an open-eyed version of this head sculpt, they can't share head caps because the open-eyed head's cap is too tight, while it's loose on the head it came with. Here you can see me testing the fit of the revised version with my incredibly scientific methods. This version looks a lot closer, just needs a tiny bit more adjustment, so I move the indentation again and then regroup everything so it's ready to go. During the course of sculpting, I also decided that since PLA gets brittle over time, it would be more practical to make this a magnet-based head cap instead of one with a catch that snaps in place like the official ones. I can easily glue a magnet to the inside of the head to hold it in place. Here you can see me adding a half cylinder for the magnet to go in, subtracting the part that sticks through the front, and using a cylinder to create a hole for the magnet that will go in the head cap. This second print turned out way closer to what I needed, but the indentation was still about a millimeter too far up and needed to be deeper. The sharp corners also need to go because the edges of the head are rounded there. So it's back to Tinkercad for a third time. I had hoped to use this squiggly primitive to get a curve I could subtract from the corners, but it wasn't going to work. I switched to using triangles instead. Since the primitive I used for the curve of the indentation was a little tapered, there ended up being some tiny bumps on the inside of the indentations, but after I examined them from a few angles, I determined they'd be too small to make any difference in the fit of the final version. So third version goes to the printer, and then we wait. Each print took about four hours, which isn't too bad, but it meant a lot of waiting. But when the third print came off the printer and I broke off the supports, I was super happy to see it fit just as well as I need for this doll. I'll glue a magnet to the inside of the head at the top to hold the head cap in place, but I don't want to do that until I decide if I'm keeping this face up the doll came with, since any solvents I use to clean it off could cause the glue to separate from the resin. The lip on the bottom edge of the head cap should hold itself in place well enough. It's not 100% perfect, there's a little gapping around the top of the indent and also at the back of the head since that part of the sculpting is slightly curved and I made something flat, but I think this will be a perfect replacement that will do everything I need for this doll. That's all for today though. Thanks for watching. Bye.